Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast, college football edition. Today, we are finally going to be previewing the OSU versus Clemson game that we've been looking forward to all year. We have the captain Byron Mitchell with us. How you doing today, sir? Doing good, doing good. And today on the college football pod, we have a special guest besides me and Byron. We have the producer, Justin Akindel, with us today to talk. OSU Clemson, how you doing today, man? Man, it's a good week. It's a big week in the football world, so I couldn't just keep my mouth shut about college this week. Not to, <laughs> not this week. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you, man. So, like we said, we're going to be previewing OSU versus Clemson. We're really going to dive into this. Um, the matchups, the coaches. Obviously, we're going to talk some Dabo. But before we do that, just clown. A little thing. (laughs) We made it. Obviously, we won the Big Ten Championship game. We didn't get to talk about that for a little bit. So we did win that, as uh, me and Byron said. We did end up third, as me and Byron said. And we're playing Clemson, as we predicted. And Alabama will be playing Notre Dame in the Rose Bowl, which will be held in Texas, because California is not letting them play football over there. So so that just a little tidbit there. But let's get into it. Byron, our first uh, football podcast, we said we wanted this game all year. It's the game we wanted, and we finally have it. The game is January 1st, 8 p.m., Mercedes-Benz Superdome on ESPN and on radio, 97.1 The Fan. Now that we finally have it, how are you feeling? I am excited. Um, As we've stated before, this is the game that we've wanted all year since our not embarrassing loss, but disappointing loss to them last year. So I'm excited, but I'm also nervous at the same time because we have never beat Clemson. And this is a game that we must win. And just to go on that, OSU is making their fourth college football playoff appearance. And we are playing Clemson, who's making their sixth college football playoff appearance. We're tied for third with uh, CFP appearances with Oklahoma and only Alabama and Clemson are the only two teams who have more appearances than us. And OSU is the only school to appear in a new year, six bowl game in all seven years of this current postseason format. So Justin, when you see this OSU Clemson rematch, now that it's finally happened, what are your first initial thoughts on this? My first initial thoughts is a heavyweight matchup. All the OSU fans that I live around and who I'm friends with, this is all they've been talking about since shit since the season ended. So it's a big game for the OSU Buckeye faithful. I don't know how seriously Clemson's taking it, but I know in Columbus, Ohio, it's a real big game, and they're looking for revenge. I know that. Facts. And Byron's already alluded to that. OSU and Clemson have only played four times and have all been bowl games, and Clemson is 4-0 and against Ohio State. They beat them in the Fiesta Bowl last year. And in 2019, 2016, Clemson beat Ohio State 31 to zero in the Orange. And then in 2014, Clemson beat Ohio State 40 to 35. And then December 29th, 1978, Clemson beat Ohio State 17 15, which is infamous because that was Woody Hayes' last game as an OC coach because he punched the Clemson player in the throat. <laughs> so when we go, Tip for tat, one of the biggest things in this rivalry now, I don't know if I want to call it a rivalry because we've never beat Clemson, but Dabo Sweeney, and I'll just let this, any of y'all can answer this. You've seen the comments that he said that he ranked Ohio State 11th. He doesn't believe that since they played six games, they should be there. Do you guys agree with Dabo or do you just think he's just putting hot air out there? I'll take this one first, Byron. He does have he does have a point about the six games. I mean, no, none of OSU's fault by any means. You guys have went in depth about how you know Kevin Warren is you know fucked up as Big Ten commissioner and all that good stuff. But I just never seen the coach of football coach in general talk so much shit. I mean, like you talk about bulletin board material. I mean, shit. He's just giving Ohio State shit to motivate them every time he opens his damn mouth. I mean, I ain't never seen anything like it. I mean, I I see where he's coming from that, you know, the three out of four top team teams have played 13 or more games. Um, but like I said, it's not our fault. 
if we had it our way, we would have started when everyone else started. Kevin Warren wanted to do what Kevin Warren wanted to do. Um, so I don't think he should be ragging on us that we only play assist games when A, it wasn't our fault, and B, some of our teammates got COVID during a pandemic year. So I don't know how you fault a team for playing as many games as they can when they've had COVID outbreak. Yeah, and I've listened to his interview with Tom Renardi actually when I was getting ready for this to re-listen to it. He talked about how it's not Ohio State, it's just because it's the team that played six games. He said he would have said the same thing if it was any other team, but since it was just Ohio State, he said this is going to be bulletin material. And he straight up said he doesn't care. He's standing by what he said. He said he doesn't have to be politically correct. Sometimes it's harder to be the right person, and he thinks he's right on this notion and dabbo has been talking about Ohio state all year. If you remember during uh, the the summertime where we weren't going to have football in the big 10 Dabo said, "Eh, that's all right. Who needs the big 10? Who needs Ohio state? There've been plenty of champions outside of the big 10, which is true. But from a revenue standpoint, you need the big 10 in there. So he's been talking about OSU all year. So to finally get to this point, It's crazy. I was listening to Clemson radio, actually, and the reporter for Clemson straight up said they're not worried. Like they're more lax. They're more chill. It's not that big a deal over there because they've already beaten Ohio State multiple times in this era. And they just feel like they can do it again. So I just want to go over some of these stats with y'all because I know when me and Justin do NFL, we go over some stats. So currently right now, OSU is ranked fifth, fifth nationally in total offense with 529 yards a game, while Clemson is ranked 10th with 507. Clemson is sixth in total defense at 298, while Ohio State is 34th at 358. Clemson is third in scoring with 44 points a game, and OSU is seventh at 42 a game. And Clemson is 11th in scoring defense at 17.5, while OSU is 25th at 21. Justin, you're an NFL stat man, so now this is college. Do you think this is a, an even matchup? Or I, I think, to me personally, that defensive uh, stat is really glaring. Yeah, the defensive stat gives me a little cause, a cause for pause a little bit, but these are two elite programs. They, they both got five-star recruits all over the board. so. When you really think about it, it's a it's a heavyweight matchup. It's one v one. I don't think I don't think the stats are going to mean too much. But yeah, that defensive stat for Ohio State's a little concerning. But I think we're we're going to get a good matchup because they're pretty pretty evenly matched teams. If you ask me, you got you got two top five quarterback picks. Run, running backs are going to go to the NFL. Receivers are going to go to the NFL. So I think it's a pretty even matchup. Throw out the stats if you ask me. Byron, what do you think when you heard those stats? I think, like Justin said, I think that defensive stat is probably the most glaring, um, only because watching the games, I know how we have given up deep passes mm-hmm. uh, against Indiana before. Um, so that's like what I'm worried about. But I think we can go toe-to-toe um, with Clemson, especially offensively. Um, so I think it might come down to who has a better defense um, in the end. Okay. Okay. Now, Justin, you brought up the quarterbacks. And I just want to circle to these quarterbacks because I feel like this game is omega important, more important to Justin Fields. The reason being for some people who don't know and don't follow the sport all willy nilly like that, Justin Fields and Trevor Lawrence only lived 20 miles from each other when they were growing up in Georgia. Mm-hmm. And they were the both, they were both the top two quarterbacks in the class of 2018. And they've spent their whole high school careers being compared to each other. And Lawrence was always mentioned first. And he's, only, and he's the one who's won their only head-to-head matchup against each other. As we know, Lawrence, when he came in as a true freshman after four games, he started, led, pumps into a championship game. Justin Fields went to Georgia, didn't replace Jake Fromm. That's Kirby Fault smart. That's why Georgia's what they are. And he transferred to Ohio State. And Justin Fields' only loss as a starter is to Clemson. And these are supposedly the top two picks in the draft. And for Justin, you got to think he's tired of being second place to this guy from 
every from a standpoint, right? Justin, like from a pride standpoint, you you get tired of being second place to the same dude your whole life. Yeah, I didn't realize that they um been playing each other and been around each other since high school. So yeah, Justin Fields is definitely sick of that stuff. You know, I played high school football too, and you know they compare you to, to the people around the area. Yeah. So yeah, that's definitely added motivation for Justin Fields. And I've been listening to the sports me and people have been saying, yeah, Justin Fields had a couple of bad games and Ohio State quarterbacks don't make it in the NFL. We see mm-hmm. Dwayne Haskins this week. Oh, uh, we'll talk about it later in a different yeah. pod. <laughs> yeah, so, I, <laughs> so I, I just think that narrative is going to motivate Justin Fields just a little bit more than Trevor Lawrence in this game specifically. Byron, what about you? Did you know that those two live 20 miles from each other? I did not know that, um, but, you know, this definitely is a pride thing if you've never beaten him, especially on that one-on-one game last year. Um, mm-hmm. So I think he had, does have extra motivation um, in this game. He actually did come out earlier this week and said he's actually never been practiced harder than he has for this game and any game in his life. And actually one of the reasons he did come back um, this year was to get that national championship. So I think that he does have that extra chip on his shoulder that Trevor Lawrence doesn't have. Agreed. And Justin, you did say something with Dwayne and not to just talk about him, but from the standpoint that with the OC quarterbacks not doing good in the NFL, if Justin has a bad game again this year against Clemson, he didn't have a bad game last year. He just threw that pick. And then he goes to the NFL and doesn't do well, not this two recruiting classes, but the ones after that, that's going to hurt OSU in getting quarterbacks because quarterbacks want to go to the league. And if our quarterbacks are going to the league and stinking it up, we're doing something wrong and producing. I'm not saying we are, but that's the narrative that's going to start going out after the Dwayne debacle, just to hit on that point that you said. But I personally, I mean, this, Obviously, whoever wins is going to the national championship game. Let's just say it, they're going to play Alabama. There's a reason Alabama's game's on at 5 p.m. because it's the lead into the OSU Clemson game because that game's going to be over by probably 5:45. Twenty and a half so, point favorites Alabama is. Wow. Right. And then I've already looked up the things. If Ohio State wins, they're a ten point underdog against Alabama right now. Ten point. Are they not? <laughs> Whose program do you think needs this win more? Does Dabo need it more? Does Ryan Day? I know what we think in Columbus, but objectively, who do you think needs it more? I think Ohio State needs it more. They haven't won a national championship in the past five years, and Clemson has. So when you just put it that way, I would say Ohio State needs this game more. Clemson, you know, they've been the last, what, three straight national championship games, something like that. So, Yeah. yeah. Ohio State definitely needs this more. They definitely want more. They haven't been there in a while. Haven't played in the national championship game in a while. So I definitely think Ohio State's going to be the hungrier team. And I definitely think they need it more. Without a doubt. Byron? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think Ohio State needs it more. Uh, Like Justin said, Clemson's been winning it the last, I think, two out of three years. Um, and Ryan Day will, if we get to the national championship, this will be his first national championship. So I think for his legacy, he needs it more than Dabo does. Um, so I definitely think Ohio State needs this more objectively than Clemson does. Yeah, Dabo's a made man already. He already has his national championships. He he literally brought Clemson for the dead because, you know, before Babel got there, Clemson wasn't shit. So I did rip him earlier, but... He is a good coach. He's, he's doing something right down there. So I definitely think Ohio State needs more. Ryan Day took over after Urban Meyer. Urban Meyer already has his legacy cemented at Ohio State. So, yeah, Ryan Day needs, needs this more than Dabo. I will say what Dabo and what Clemson does better than any other school in the country is they don't lose assistants. They pay their assistants good money, and they all stay. So that continuity with the coaching staff, I think, has really helped Clemson especially that defensive coordinator who Ryan Day came out and basically said that dude steals signs. So I know Clemson will use that as motivation as well. They all are. Uh, yeah, they all are. But just, <laughs> what, do you, what do you think the keys to the game are? Like, what are your keys to the game for an Ohio State victory? What do they have to do? My keys to the game are 
Defensively, need to stop ETN. Stop okay. the run. This make sure that's not a concern. Got make sure Clemson's one dimensional. And no and don't let Trevor Lawrence get to running. Because once he starts mm-hmm. running, then that's when he's the number one pick in the draft. So if Ohio State can do that and they can move the ball offensively, give the ball to Trey Sermon like they did against Northwestern, I think I think we're gonna get the game that we've been hoping for since spring. Byron, what are your keys to the game? Uh, for me, defensively, is not letting them get deep passes. Um, again, back to that Indiana game, uh, our cornerbacks look bad against the deep pass. So I think if we can contain them defensively on the deep pass, I think we'll have a good shot. Um, and again, our running game is not our running game, but our run defense is pretty good. So if we can stop ATN, um, keep them one dimensional to short passes. Um, I think we can win. And then offensively, have, Justin Fields needs to have a good game, not a game against like he had against Indiana or Northwestern. If he has a good game, I think um, that would be key in helping us win as well. Yeah, I think offensively, since you ended offense, I'll start there. I think to step further, Justin Fields has to have the best game in his life to win this game just because I don't think our defense can hold Clemson. So Justin Fields has to be really ready to go tit for tat with Clemson's offense. I think Chris Olave, hopefully he is back playing Saturday because that would be great with him and Wilson. We got to keep feeding it to Trey Sermon. One of the best old school strategies to beat top quarterbacks is to keep them off the field. And if Trey Sermon can get loose like he was against Northwestern, that's going to be a good key for us to win the game. And then defensively, I'm going to be looking at Sean Wade. He was the one who got ejected because of the bogus targeting. He's the one who has been getting cooked by the top receivers that we've played. He's the one who just became an All-American, which I don't know how, but it is what it is. So I'm going to be looking at him. Yeah, I, I really want a big game from him. I don't, want to, I don't want him getting burned. I mean, his draft stock's on the line, too. He hasn't proven that he could be that next top corner from Ohio State. He's going to be a top pick, but is he going to be a top three pick? Like Chris Okuda, probably not. So I'm expecting a big game from him. I want to see if we can just, if we can get pressure with just four on Trevor Lawrence, we can win this game. If we have to blitz every down, he's just going to tear us apart. At Can't blitz Trevor Lawrence. You won't win, the, win that one. Can't blitz no. him. Just run. You just either throw, it, either throw it behind the blitz or not get sacked and get loose on the blitz. You got to get pressure with four. That is a definitely key to the game. Yeah. And then the, also the biggest thing from last year's game is that we were getting in the red zone almost every possession, but we weren't getting touchdowns. We were getting field goals, which allowed Clemson to get back in the game because we were up 17 before all the bad things happened. So we get in the red zone. We got to score touchdowns. No Agreed. field goals. I don't even care if we go for it on fourth. And we, we need to get touchdowns because last year's field goal stuff didn't work out for us. That's what we need to do. Going forward in this game, it's Saturday. I mean, Friday, New Year's Day. Byron, do you have a score? What do you, what do you think the score is going to be? I think it's going to be really close, like it was last year. I think last year it was twenty nine, twenty three, Clemson. Yes, I think it'll be a one score game. I'm going to say thirty five, twenty eight, Ohio State. Thirty five, twenty eight. Justin, do you have a score? Yeah, I do have a score. I think I did talk about defense earlier, but I don't think too much defense is honestly going to be played with these two quarterbacks <laughs> playing. So I'm looking at a 35-32 game, Pile State. Okay. But really, you can go either way, but let's yeah. go, Buckeyes. Okay. Yeah, I like your score, Justin. I, do, I think it's going to be 30s, but I'm going to go, I'm gonna go 31-30 OSU. Game winning field goal at the end to win the game. And I per- this game is huge for the program because there was a point in the early 2000s where the thing was Ohio State was really good, but they couldn't beat an SEC team. And that was the thing. We couldn't compete with the speed. And we finally competed with speed, beat an SEC team. And then that was out. Now the new thing is yeah, Ohio State's one of those top three t- programs in the country. But it's Clemson and Alabama at the top. 
and then you have them work a couple of notches down. I think we, we need to win this game to prove that we're on that notch because they're already talking about the Clemson Alabama rematch. Like we're not playing. So this is a huge, this is a defining, it'd be a defining win for the program if they win and they need to win or we're just going to be seen as that third wheel on the top conference in the top uh, programs of the country. And then Yeah, and if we don't win, you know, I was going to talk extra shit. Oh my God. Uh, yeah. And I don't post, want that. <laughs> I, I don't either because that post game, because Dabo, to be honest, if we lose, Dabo's going to talk. Texas A&M Twitter is going to talk. Georgia Twitter is going to talk. Anyone who got left out and they were mad that we only played six, they are going to attack. And they've been attacking all year. It's literally been Ohio State versus the whole country. But it'd be Ohio so bad. against the world. I can't. You'd have to turn off Twitter if you're a Buckeye fan because you'd have nothing to say. Man, I, I I still am amazed at Dabo's shit talk though. Like for a man who is, <laughs> for a man who has won his main games and won his national main national titles, this man has he still has to go through that bag of talking shit. I don't ever see Nick Saban talking shit. I never saw Urban Meyer talking shit. Like back to, back to what I said earlier, who does this man think he is? Like <laughs> Justin Dabo. If that's his way to get his players fired up or something, like only that thing I the, see is him pissing off everyone else in college football. With, every time he opens his mouth, he asks me. That is what Dabo does. When he's, uh, when he's winning, he's like, oh, we weren't even supposed to be here. That's what he does. Look at the tape. And when they lose, they're like, oh, well, this, this, this happened, this happened. It's crazy because a couple of years ago, he's like, oh, I don't think we had a competitive advantage that our conference is weaker than the SEC. And they play Alabama and does that. But when it comes to us. Bro, he, he just flips it, man. That's what he does. He tries to sound like a preacher, and he just talks and puts his foot in his mouth, and he doesn't care. And the thing is, his players don't care. They play for him. That's the problem. They don't He's care. definitely a, a hypocrite, because I read somewhere earlier in the year, he's like, it's crazy. Like, it doesn't matter who how many games you play during you know, this pandemic year now that We've only played six games. He's flipped the script and said, oh, well, uh, they shouldn't be in because they've only played six games. Like, bro, make up your mind. <laughs> it, he uses the narrative to fit himself. You even saw him at the end of the ACC championship game had said that, man, it'd be a real disgrace to the Heisman if they don't have Trevor's name on it. You, he don't need you. You need him. I'm like, what? He missed the game. He didn't play all the fucking games. What do you mean he ain't going to be the Heisman? He ain't playing all the damn games. Isn't that a requirement? I mean, shit, it's a shortened season. <laughs> I'm going to plug all your players for everything. God damn, I'll never see Nick Saban doing that. His players win everything. Justin, but it's a shortened season. But when it applies to his people, he doesn't care. Can you imagine if Justin Fields was in the Heisman race? He would have flipped shit. <laughs> like, you, like, you gotta imagine this shit is a COVID year. Like, shit's been, shit's been fucked up all year. And it just amazed me, like, some of these coaches just politicking for, their, for, the, for themselves and just, oh, it's sickening. It's like politics almost. Jesus. Yeah. yeah he really said the Heisman would be ashamed if they didn't have Trevor Lawrence's name on it. I'm like, bro, what? Trevor Lawrence, if you. He- Anyone who wins the Heisman, you can go be a bust in the NFL, and you're still set for life. Yeah, you're just going to be in those Nissan Heisman commercials. You, you, you <laughs> college football legend, legend when you win that shit. Mm-hmm. And he said, yeah. oh, my God. So I'm assuming then, Justin, you're not picking Trevor Lawrence to win the Heisman. If you do, you're going to riot. Yeah, no. Of course you shouldn't be the Heisman winner. To be honest, I'm, I mean, I'm he like, doesn't have the best stats. I looked at the um, passing yards before we got on. Kyle Trask got, got the most passing yards. We're talking about quarterbacks. To be honest, I don't even think it should be the quarterbacks who win. Yeah, I think, it, think, should it, be, be, uh, I think it should I be think Demonte Smith. Smith. He's been going yeah. off since um, Waddle got hurt. I actually yep. think it should be the Heisman winner. I really do. I know he just won the AP whatever best player. Yeah, AP I, player of the year. I think he should win the Heisman. I'm not going to lie. I mean, they lost it. They, um, Jalen Waller was a their receiver who got hurt. He was he's oh. a first round pick too. Mm-hmm. He's a first round pick too, and he gets hurt. And Alabama didn't miss a beat. And he yeah. got he got probably all the targets that Waller got, but shit, it helps out. He got fifteen hundred yards receiving. 
Jimbo Fisher talked about that too. He's like, the only game we lost to was Alabama. And that was a real Alabama. Y'all remember Waddle? We had to play against him. Y'all didn't have to play against him. And he was using that to try and get in. I'm like, bro, who are you getting in over? You lost. <laughs> by but man, I, yeah, Justin, you're right. Davo, this, this is different. I've never seen a coach's poll get publicized like this. I've never seen a coach go on ESPN and defend it. And he's talking on to all the people and fine bomb and all of them. And it, it's wild, man. And he shouldn't even be afraid. Like, I don't know what he's right, doing. He, he's beat us the last, what, a couple times he played us? Mm-hmm. So I don't know why he's talking this so much shit. I mean, he's the same pl- coach who said, oh, if Clemson loses to uh, Notre Dame, we should still get in with two losses. Like, bro, uh-huh. what? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot he said that, Brian. That is some shit. <laughs> you lose to Notre Dame twice, well, we should still get in. I mean, Trevor Warren's ain't play. I mean. He's the best quarterback who ever touched touched the face of those hearts. Well, he also remember this is also the same guy who said Deshaun Watson was the Michael Jordan college football. I said, hmm. Mm. Now, I said, damn, bro, the Michael Jordan. <laughs> but I mean, he, oh, he's sweet. I mean, he did take Alabama for that first championship for Dabo. So that's, yeah, that's true. I, I don't know, and and so. Just in other college football news coming down the pipe from that team up north, Harbaugh is actually getting an extension. I think it's a done deal today. Uh, good for them. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you expect from the man who hasn't beaten his beaten his rival yet? Ohio State, Michigan State's beat once. I mean, I sure, sure, Michigan. <laughs> I'll ask you, Justin, what would you have done with Jim Harbaugh? Would you have got rid of him by now? I wouldn't have got rid of him. Who the fuck am I going to get? <laughs> you can go yeah, get rid y- of y- Y'all remember Michigan before he got there. She, they weren't being Ohio State, but they weren't being anyone. <laughs> they weren't being <laughs> any goddamn person before him. <laughs> so until I know if there's someone on the market that I know is better than him, I'll, I'll stick with Harbaugh until he gets sick of Michigan and goes to the NFL. I mean, I. Hey, who who, who would they it. get? Like, who, who's the candidate out there that's going to change, turn Michigan around? Like, well, there is. They get man. Urban Meyer, which I know he won't do that. So, no, but you got you don't have to go big name. I'm just telling you, go down to Indiana, bring the Brinks truck to Tom Allen, get the Indiana coach. Look what he did to Indiana. If okay. it wasn't for that's if true. It wasn't for, if it wasn't for the debacle of the Big Ten rules and all that, Indiana would be in the Big Ten championship game. And they would have won. They would have beat North Bro. They have Michael Penix. They would have beat it in Northwestern, too. I think Brian Kelly will ever lead Notre Dame from UM? Is, North, is UM a better job than Notre Dame? That's a good question. I think Remember, have- he brought Cincinnati up. People forget Brian Kelly put Cincinnati on the map. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think Michigan and Notre Dame will have the same problems, but Notre Dame also has their own TV network. They don't got split it in the Big Ten. So I, will, I think that might be a little better. And Brian Kelly has taken Notre Dame to a national championship game in the BCS era and two college football playoff appearances. If Michigan had that success, he'd have a statue. He, he would. Like- no, he wouldn't. Bo Schimbler won national championships. That's the only statue outside of Michigan. Their standards used to be high, but oh, it's not like, anymore. It's the not standards anymore. Used, the standards used to be high, but I don't, I don't know what the hell's wrong with Michigan. I mean, the one game I went to was um eighteen. Wasn't that the year they were supposed to beat Ohio State? Wasn't that the year that? Yep, that was, was the revenge to tour. Compared? Yep. Hold on, before you even go, Justin, the week before that game. We had to stop Maryland on a two-point conversion to win the game 51-50. to Yeah, I remember that game, and I was at the Michigan game that year, and I was geeked up. It was my first OSU Michigan game. I was like, oh, yeah, I'm about to see a fucking game. We left that bitch at the beginning of the third quarter because the game was <laughs> over. <laughs> we were having more fun at the, fun at the bar than watching that shit show of a game. Michigan, like, where is the pride at this point? Like, they just come – they just – it's like they come into the game and they're just completely overmatched every single time. They have no answer for anything. It's just. Well, 2016 was their best shot 
They were the number three team in the country, and that was the Curtis Samuel walk-off in double OT. Ah, such a great game. I was there. I mean, that's the one where Harbaugh complained about how we didn't get it on fourth and inches, and we got it. And ever since then, that was the closest game we've ever had with Michigan with the Harbaugh air. And ever since then, they've been it's just been blowouts. And it's and I guess it's almost the same thing like Clemson. I mean, in Ohio State, we we care about the shit more. It's just it is what it is. It's a it's an SEC team in the Midwest. <laughs> I've been saying that. <laughs> it is. Just, they care, but like Real OSU fans, I'm not an OSU fan. I'm an Ohio State supporter. But the real o, <laughs> the real OSU fans, they they are as delusional as ever, and they take that shit seriously. It's fucking religion to them. Oh, I, just like it is yeah. in the South. It's a holiday oh, yeah. every every Saturday. Every Saturday at 12 p.m. It's a fucking holiday. Mm-hmm. Oh yes, it is. Yes, sir. You, you get up early. You do your. You either do your shopping. Early, or you try and sneak it in at halftime because you know no one will be at the stores. You go Kroger at 12 p.m. noon on no Saturday one. in Columbus, empty. No one, and I've worked those Saturdays at Kroger. No, not a soul. But as soon as that game's over, flock. Like it, it's different here. I mean, I agree with your statement. It, it, it is different in Columbus, Ohio, when it comes to this team. And if they lose on Friday, it's going to be. <laughs> Oh, we are. It's going to be a hard. It's going to be a hard new year. We're bringing out the hammers oh, yeah. if they lose. Oh, right. yeah. If this wasn't a COVID year and we won, this town would go f- crazy. Oh, burn a city down. I'll drive <laughs> up. I'll drive up just for that. I'll, mm. It might still burn the city down if they beat Clemson. Oh, that was the thing I wanted to bring up because they're playing and there's going to be fans there. Do you think that's going to matter? In this game, because OSU hasn't played really in front of fans all like that, and Clemson has. So I don't know how much crowd noise is going to be there, but do you think that matters? Where's the game at again? I was in Biden. Uh, yeah, Mercedes Superdome. All right, so they can only have like 6,000 people there, so no. Okay. It, won't, it, won't, it won't be a factor. It'll be a spring game. Crowd noise-wise. <laughs> Not even that, because a uh, spring game, there's like forty thousand people there, so there will barely be any noise. That 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 won't make a difference. That's wild, Justin. Where are you watching the game at? Watching the game, probably in my apartment. You know, I'm you know I got the brace on, so I can't move around too much. No, oh, I mean, because that the, the group message is going to be. You know, that message, that group message is about to be hot from eight to twelve. I already know. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I'm probably going to be the main one. <laughs> <laughs> you know how I get during Ohio State game? By um, you, you just need to take it easy there in the game. Because you start texting that group, I think you're going to have a brain aneurysm. You be getting <laughs> hot. <laughs> I can't help it, man. I try. I try my best. I, I try. Are the, are the refs announced yet? Because that's a whole other issue. What was the crew last year? SEC. SEC. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I swear if I see the same three people this year, I'm oh my god. It won't be the same crew. Thank you. Well, it's probably gonna be another SEC crew. It's down in New Orleans, so mm-hmm. I would I would think they'll probably find a close group to do the game. Dang, see you that, that already has 30 text messages from Byron and his brain ready. Is one <laughs> Once a bad call happened, we're all going to be thinking that fumble was the worst call I've seen in my life. Bro, I don't still don't how you know how you don't rule that as a fumble, man. I keep <laughs> seeing it pop on my Twitter and I keep watching it like, man, that's a fumble. I don't know. I don't know. But shoot, that's really all we got, man. Byron, Justin, what's, what's the last words for this game? What's some words of encouragement? What's some, what's some things I'm going to say? First off, go Bucks. Uh, mm-hmm. Destroy Clemson. Um, just you know, stick to your game plan. Uh, you know, don't give up those deep passes. Score in the red zone. No field goals. But if you have to, field goal make like last resort. But we gotta score as often as we can because Clemson they can score often as they can. Uh, don't let Trevor Lawrence. You know, be Trevor Lawrence, and I think we can win. Justin, 
Any last words? It's going to be a shootout, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I haven't looked at the line, but I will probably take the over. Okay. Take Ohio State with the points. Ooh, hey. I'm hoping Ohio State can get the win right, outright. And when they do get the win outright, let's see what Dabo has to say at the press conference and oh. after the games. Because this man, he's been running his mouth for fucking months now. So let's see what he's going to say after they lose the game. Yeah. Yeah. And my last thing to OSU fans, guys, we got to get this done. I mean, we're not the ones playing, the team's playing, but send prayers their way. Because I'm going to tell you right now, we're, as of right now, we ain't going to be here next year. We're almost going to be in a rebuild. And obviously, we just reload, but there's a chance we won't be here. So we got to get this done now. We can't keep losing to the same team every two years. And if you lose on a field goal, on some bull, that's all right. The last thing, the last thing we need is a 31-0 game. The last thing. That, that's culture death. So let's get it done. And shoot, that's really it. That's all we have for the Buckeye and Clemson preview, college football playoff preview on the L7C podcast. Thank you, Justin and Byron, for being on, talking some college football. and. Let's get it going again. Game 8 p.m. New Year's Day ESPN. You listen to the radio, 97.1 The Fan. And that's all we have. And go Bucks. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms. And we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.